Hi, my name is Bob and welcome to the homestead y'all. In this video, we're building an e-tank. You can see it running right there. We took this old rusty old three-notch lodge and in two hours time turned it into a usable pan. It was actually so bad I thought it was a single notch lodge, which you'll see in the video. So enjoy. show you how I started this I drilled a hole put me a stainless steel bolt in here and then I measured around the drum of course I have six uh, pieces of steel I'm putting in here there's another mark uh, but I measured all the way around it was 72 inches so that divides easily by six um, so every foot so every foot I'm gonna have a hole and I went all the way around and marked it by foot and then took my square and went to the top and put them all at three and a quarter inches from the top uh, so i did that all the way around so now i'm going to go ahead and drill all my holes uh, for my bolt heads that way i can bolt my pieces of steel in here okay you can see i've got one piece of steel in there's the stainless steel bolt head now I only bring my water up to right in here to where this head isn't underwater I don't have a seal here to leak uh, to keep it from leaking so I'll only bring it up to about the bottom of that hole that first hole on that Show you what I have so far. This is my long bolt. That's where my positive clamp for my battery charger will go. And that's my sacrificial metal. You can use any kind of metal on this. Um, I may come back and put another one in between. I'm gonna wait and see how well this works. Uh, but they go nearly to the bottom. Those are 20 inches long in a 55 gallon drum. Of course, I drilled my holes uh, equal spacing to put six of these pieces in all the way around as you can see I just measured around it and, and put them equal distance uh, and then I came around the outside as you saw with my 10 gauge wire with ring terminals on it and my stainless steel bolts now these other ones are shorter uh, this one I left I put a longer bolt in so that way I can hook my positive clamp for my battery charger now we need to put us a board across uh, with a hole in the center to uh, hang our wire to hang uh, whatever we're going to use in the e-tank and first thing I'm going to do is a uh, piece of cast iron we'll do us a cast iron skillet and see how it turns out I got me a piece of wood to go across it and drilled me a hole put an eye bolt in it I'm going to use an eye bolt because I'm going to use a old 
metal clothes hangers to hook my uh, whatever I'm putting in the e-tank like my cast iron pan or car parts or whatever I'm going to use a uh, old clothes hanger so that way I can adjust the height uh, so that way if the water's not all the way up which I only feel it to about here on this hole because uh, these aren't leak proof you know water will go out of that plus I don't want to get it out here on the wire um, so I'll only fill the water up there and as the water evaporates out I don't want to have to keep constantly filling it throughout the summer so I can put a longer coat hanger wire on with a hook and get it down into the tank a little further if I'm doing something longer I may make uh, add some pieces take some of these and cut them in half and make it all the way to the bottom and go across the bottom of the tank so that way anything I'm you trying to clean in the e-tank it'll even clean it from the bottom because most your cleaning is direct from the metal piece to whatever piece you're trying to clean so it's line of sight basically so I'll have to spin the, whatever I'm doing I'll have to spin it a little because it may have a blank spot where I don't have a piece of metal here that it's not cleaning so I may have to spin that so that's why I was talking earlier I may go ahead and drill and put another set of these I think I have six more of them and uh, go ahead and connect my wires on the outside to them just cut them in half and put terminals on them and go ahead and drill new holes in them but I'm gonna try this for now I think it'll work good I think it'll serve my purpose uh, like I said I've got some cast iron skillets I want to try in it so it's pretty much done I have my uh, I have two old battery chargers I'm gonna try and see which one does best with this and I think for tonight, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with water, get my washing soda in it, get it mixed up, and leave it set overnight. And then tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and give it a whirl. Okay, we have our barrel full of water. You can see that bear course. Now, this is rainwater. We are off grid and collect all our water in cisterns. So, this is unfiltered rainwater. And what we're going to use is the Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. Now we'll put this at, uh, they say, between a third and a half cup per five gallons. So we have roughly 50 gallons of water, so five cups of washing soda. Alright, five cups of Arm & Hammer Washing Soda. That's a half cup. So I'm going to put 10 of these half cups in here. I'm going to put 10 half cups and stir it up with a shovel. So now let's get us a pan hanging in there and hook our battery charger up. Three notch or single notch lodge, I'm sorry. It doesn't have a whole lot of rust, but it's got quite a bit on it. So this is a six or seven I think it's a six uh, so let's see how this does hook here so I'm gonna hang it on there all right so you can see I have my negative hooked on my long bolt of course our charge controllers off battery charger and I have my negative up here which goes through to the eye bolt down to the pan. So let's turn him on. Charge. Okay, just turn him on. Oh, I can see it working right away. You see the bubbles coming up to the top. All right, now we'll leave him a few hours. We'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Since the pan's been in there, and it's kicked up to about four amps now. Look, you can see stuff starting to build on top. Okay, shut the charge controller off. Unplugged it there. Let's take a look at this pan. This is two hours. It's been in there. 
Well, it's looking pretty good. I see a few uh, stubborn rust spots right there. I may take a wire brush real quick and hit those. Uh, big difference though. Okay, took the pan out. And I went to just hit it with a wire brush and I thought, well, I'm gonna rub it with my gloves, but you can see this rust right there. Look, it just comes right off. So I think this pan's done just after two hours. There's some more on the inside right there. But look, it just rubs right off with just using my gloves. Isn't that nice? Looky there. So I'm gonna take a old rag. And I'm gonna wipe this pan down, wash it off, and I'll show you what it looks like after I get done. But yeah, there's a number five on it. So this is a number five. Couldn't see that before because of the rust. But let me go ahead and get a rag, clean it up, and then we'll wash it real good with the hose and see how it looks. But even here on the handle, see on the handle, that just rubs right off. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, that's the next one right now. All right, well here it is after I've washed it up looks completely different there's a little bit of rust right here i think i'll take some uh, scotch bright and hit that uh, finish hitting the bottom with a little scotch bright you can see a few few marks on it here i'm not sure what that is that may just be scratches in it um, but the pan come out great you saw how rusty it was when it went in um, i could probably leave it in the e-tank a little longer and get the rest of this off there's a little bit down inside that five I couldn't even see that five and it is a three notch lodge. It's not a single notch. When I went to put it in, I could only see the one notch. I couldn't see these other two. So it's a three notch lodge, number five. Uh, but it came out great. Like I said, I'm just gonna take a little scotch bright, clean that up, clean the bottom of this up a little bit more with scotch bright. And this pan's ready to go to get seasoned. I'll put a little coat of oil on it for now, just so it doesn't rust. And then we'll season this baby up and use it. Okay, let me show you this pan real quick. Christy took it in and washed it. And I hit it with a little scotch bright, a couple of the rusty spots. And then put a quick coat of oil on it. Little number five, three notch lodge. I think it come out great. There are a few safety concerns I do want to talk about. Of course, we have water and we have electricity. Also from the battery charger, you can see I have it plugged in there. So always be careful. Do not touch electricity. Do not stick your finger in the water or something metal down in the water while you have your charger on and it plugged in. This charger, you can see it's putting off about seven amps, something like that with this particular pan. So you definitely don't want to stick your hand in there. Next thing I want to talk about is the gases that this produces. Uh, you just want to put metal in there. We're using it primarily for cast iron pans, but I'll probably do some axe heads in here and some hammer heads that I have. Uh, but you still want to be careful that it produces gases with electricity. So if you put something corrosive in there, like uh, copper, stainless steel, galvanized metal, you want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area. Of course, we have ours outside. Uh, but if you do it in a garage, make sure you have the garage door open because you don't want those gases to build up and poison you. You don't want to stand with your head directly over the barrel uh, because it will produce fumes. All right, the next thing I want to talk about, and that is the type of metals you put in here. You just want to put steel in here if you can. Uh, you don't want to put copper. Definitely don't want to put copper if you're going to be putting cast iron pans in here. Now, if you're just going to be doing auto parts or something like that, then you can put painted products in here. You could put greasy, oily products in here, uh, but definitely want to stay away from the copper, like the copper that I've used here to connect these wires, because it will transfer onto your pan, or it can transfer onto your pans. 
Uh, you don't want to use galvanized in here, just like heating up galvanized or welding galvanized, it puts off poisonous gases. So you definitely don't want to do that. You, you want to be careful with aluminum. Aluminum, this will just eat aluminum down to nothing. If you left an aluminum pan in here, hung it up, uh, it, it would eat it down to basically nothing. Uh, so just be careful what metals you put in. Try to stick with steel and you should be good. Okay, another safety concern is your hydrogen gas. You see all these little bubbles on top? That could be hydrogen gas. So don't be smoking open flame. Don't take a torch or cigarette lighter around the top of this or you could get a quick flash. Uh, just something else to think about. Okay, so let's just go over the basics of this. Of course, we have our wiring connected to our sacrificial metal that's in there. Have it bolted through. You saw that in the video. And then we have it hooked to a manual charge controller. You can see manual charge controller, roughly 7 amps. So basically, what we have is the positive is under here and it's on my long bolt that I showed you the negative hooks to the product whatever you're trying to clean so this is the negative side it's hooked to the eye bolt which is hooked to the pan that's in here so basically when you turn the charger on negative side positive side and it's pulling the rust from the negative side to the positive side so you have an anode and a cathode Okay, this next one I just got out of the lye bath. It's a Griswold number 80. It's a deep skillet. You can see there's some rust here on the handle. Some light rust all the way around it and then inside also. Now this is a deep skillet. A lot of people confuse these with a chicken fryer, but they're not. It's a deep skillet. You can tell because it has the two pour spouts. If it didn't have the pour spouts, then it's a chicken fryer. This one's really neat because it's the bottom of a double skillet. That's what this is here. There's a skillet that goes in on top and you have two skillets or you can use the other skillet as a lid. I do not have the lid for it. So if you have one and you want to get rid of it, hit me up in the comments below. But you can see there's rust right here. So I think this one, I bet it won't take but about an hour in the E-tank. So I'm going to get it in there and see what it looks like when it comes out. Alright, got the number 8 Griswold out. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I put a little bit of oil on it. Still have to season it. Small block Griswold number 80. That E tank just did a just did a wonderful job. Isn't that beautiful? Alright, well that's how you build an E tank. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching.